Boom. What's up with the family? What's going on? Susan Siegel or Seagal. This is uh, Diddy's uh, former assistant. She broke her silence on watching the video. We're seeing the video that CNN released with uh, Diddy and um, Cassie. So let's take a listen. I want to react to it. Come on. Tonight, CNN has exclusively obtained 2016 surveillance video showing Sean Diddy Combs physically assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in the hallway of a Los Angeles hotel. I want to warn you because we're going to show you this video and it is disturbing. At the beginning, you see Ventura in the hotel elevator barefoot. Okay, I think we're going to skip past that portion of the video. We'll listen to her commentary. We'll listen to the commentary, but I don't want to show the video again just because YouTube be tripping a little bit. But we've all seen it. If you haven't seen it, I uploaded the whole video to. No, no. I think I did a reaction to it. Anyways, let's move on. Trying to put her shoes on. And then around the corner here in the video, as she's got her bags with her, comes Diddy holding a towel around his waist, running down the hall. Right. He grabs her by the back of her neck and he throws her to the floor, still holding his towel closed with the, on the other hand as he turns to kick her. Seconds after that, where you see him grabbing her bags here in the hallway, he's seen here sitting down in a chair, grabbing an object off the table, we believe it's a vase, and throwing it at her. This incident is important and Crazy it matches fool. the allegations that are in a now settled lawsuit that she filed against him last November. Allegations about what happened at the since-closed Intercontinental Hotel in Los Angeles. Diddy's attorney says that there was no admission of wrongdoing as a result of that settlement, and I should note that he has previously vehemently denied these allegations. No admission of wrongdoing. But after CNN obtained this video and published it today, Ventura's now husband appeared to respond on Instagram, posting a message addressed to the women and children on there. He says in part, and I'm quoting him. Shit, I didn't hear this. Now, men who hit women aren't men. Men who enable it and protect those people aren't men. Yeah, they aren't men either. That has been the overwhelming sentiment from anybody that I've heard watch this. Everybody says the th same thing. If you can sit by and watch that happen as a man, you got to reevaluate who you are as a person. To all the survivors... Your stories are real and people believe you. To the abusers, you're done. You're not safe anymore. You're not protected anymore. And the men by your side are just as weak. I want to bring. That's 100%. That's 100% fact. And I'll tell y'all, um, me, me, myself, I have a personal experience with that. You know, it's documented. I don't go for stuff like that. So long story short, back on Halloween of 2014, I saw some uh I saw some crazy stuff going on. And uh I stopped to help this woman cuz this dude was like accosting her and uh assaulting her, you know? And I stopped to help. Lo and behold, the bro bro up the knife, you know. Boom, I wound up getting getting stabbed nine times. Almost lost my life that night. But it's a testament I can speak um to this from a point of actually taking action in a situation like that and I just I don't understand how anybody could sit by and watch a woman be assaulted or anything to the magnitude what Sean Diddy Combs did to to Cassie in that video and not do anything and feel like you are you know a man supposed to be a protector and this that and the third you know you just you're not that all right come on someone in who knows Diddy personally. Susie Siegel was his former assistant during the time that he began dating Cassie Ventura, the singer. Uh, and I should note, you became his assistant as a part of, of the, the reality show to, to work for him. I did. Everyone remembers watching that. I, I mean... Oh, okay. She must have been the making of the band. To... Well, first, just... I mean, what is it like for you to see this video that came out today? I, I felt sick. And I felt violently angry. And I felt like... I'm sure a lot of men and women uh, feel looking at that video that it's so disturbing yeah. that the video doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when I watched it, what stood out to me initially after Elizabeth Wagmeister got it was she's barefoot in the beginning. And it's like she was so quickly running out of the room. 
to get to to the elevator that she didn't even put her shoes on yet. Right. She was just trying to get up out of there by any means necessary. Let me just grab my essentials and let me book it. Let me just let me go. That's a detail that I didn't notice initially either. I didn't notice that she didn't have um, her shoes on until they just played the video again there. I mean, that's terror. That's what you would do if there was a fire, right? You would just run out, grab what you could. Right. So I can only imagine looking at that, the fear that she felt she had to get out of that room in bare feet in order to be safe or protect herself. I mean... You worked closely with him. I did. I was his assistant between 2008 and 2009, and they were dating when I worked for him. And what was what was he like, and what were what did you observe about them at this time? I observed nothing that would lead me to believe, or I, there was no scuttlebutt about it. I never saw him speak harshly to her or be abusive toward her or anything like that. I rode in the limos with them. I went to parties with them. Um, I guess what I would say is, even though I never saw anything that could corroborate what's in that lawsuit and what we just saw, there was not one cell in my body that was surprised. Why not? Yeah, that's interesting. Why not if you never saw anything? Maybe it's just because of the allegations, but Gene Deal said something similar to that. He's like, man, I see them like pillow fight and play fight or this, that, and the third, you know? All right, I'm going to just play the clip. This is from Art of Dialogue in uh. If you want to watch the whole thing, I'll leave the link in the description. Come on. When, when, when I, whenever I was working with him, you know, he would act like that play fight with the pillows and everything, roughing the girls up like that. So if I didn't see nothing like, you know, I wouldn't see it because they'd be in the room. But if she don't run out screaming and hollering or I, or I don't hear no help, ain't nothing I can do about it. But if she come out and she's in distress and he's trying to do something, I'm going to do something about it. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, so that's interesting. So it's like one of them things, maybe Diddy just, he kept the stuff in the, uh, you know, in the dark to a certain degree. Maybe when he was putting hands and feet on his, uh, you know, on his partners or, or women or whatever the case may be, he did it behind closed doors, you know. I don't know. But anyways, let's get back to the assistant. Come on. You know, it's going to sound a little bit weird because I don't have any facts, right? And nobody's going to call me to testify. But I would say that it's woman's intuition. Mm. I would say that I was around him a lot and I got a feeling for who he was. I didn't see anything um, that could get him in trouble. But I think that the the power dynamic in a situation like that, especially her at the beginning of her career, so young and beautiful and talented, and she hooked herself or became involved with somebody who had so much power. Yeah, not only just so much power in the music industry, but specifically power over her, specifically power over her. So this is one of the things that I go to, you know, when I'm running my laps or like covering stuff. I like to go to the court paperwork, man. So let's take a look at that real quick, right? Okay, boom. So this is the Cassie lawsuit against Diddy. We're going to slide down to page six. We're going to go to the factual allegations. And when I said that he had that power over her, you know, specifically in her career, check this out. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Within months, in February of 2006, Miss Ventura signed a 10 album deal with Mr. Combs record label. A 10 album deal. Respectfully to Cassie, but she's not like the greatest singer in the world. 10 albums, 10 albums. Man. You know what I'm saying? He had a lot of a lot of power over the trajectory of her career path. So, yeah, I agree with what she's saying. Come on. And I felt that working for him. I'm sure the whole team felt that. And I mean, that's right. He's a mogul. So, of course, he's the big boss. 
But I think that you could imagine, certainly in my interactions with him, you could imagine how that would dissipate and, and sort of seep into every aspect of his life and especially his relationships. Yeah, because, I mean, she was 19, I believe, and he was 37 when they first began dating. Right. So imagine how that would be. And then he's rich. And not only is he rich, but he controls your career. And all you want in your career, right, is she's an artist. She wants to make music. She really was an artist, is an artist. And now all of a sudden, she's with somebody who could make that happen for her. And it doesn't happen. Or, or not only make that happen, he had complete control over everything. She can't go make music anywhere else. She can't go do nothing because she's contractually bound to this fool that's whooping and beating on her. That's crazy. He's like the black Harvey Weinstein, you know? And so you don't It's like did Diddy have a casting couch or well, what the what the fuck was going on, man? You don't it wasn't anything specific. You just you got a strange, uncomfortable feeling from him? I mean, or? it was I think it's more to do with the way that he treated people. Again, nobody was mistreated that I saw. I didn't feel mistreated, but it was very clear to me. Again, this is intuition, right? This is what we pick up as women and humans who are smart and have been around. He just didn't see your humanity when he looked at you. I felt it felt very obvious to me that. Exactly. He was OK with degrading people. We saw him degrade, uh, you know, everybody from the making of the band when he made them go get that cheesecake. That was some demoralizing shit right there. You know, in the hip hop industry, you can do as an MC, especially, it doesn't take much for your credibility to be destroyed, you know, or your image to be destroyed. And you got these quote unquote street cats that's rapping all these gangsta ass lyrics. But then you got Diddy telling them, y'all niggas better walk. You want me to open the studio? I mean, you better bark your ass over there and give me some motherfucking cheesecake. Like, bro, it ain't no coming back from you just tarnish it. And it, that was like so de degrading. It just, you know what I'm saying? You just defecated on these brothers. Like, bro, that was real out of pocket. I see Everyone what she's saying. Was just sort of there to be used. The, he can get the most out of you. You know, for example, I went to go work for him. I'm a pretty senior person. It was sort of an odd thing. I have a fancy master's degree, whatever. Who cares? Um, but it was... You know, he wanted to get me for as cheaply as he could. And most people would just dive in and take it, right? Because you think that you're going to get something by working for him. And I wonder how that video, which right. you know, he denied a lot these allegations, and those allegations were in the lawsuit. I mean, he's facing five other civil lawsuits yep. that are accusing him of a range of sexual misconduct and illegal activity. Everyone remembers the raid at his homes in Miami and New York, where it was the, the part of the Department of... Damn, I didn't know he was facing five other civil lawsuits. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to see what other five he's got. And like, yeah, we should do some live streams and look off into those and see what kind of details are inside of those about, you know what I'm saying? Uh, -uh. uh Diddy. Homeland Security, the deals Man. with human trafficking. Yep. And I should know, he hasn't been charged with anything. Of course. They, they've maintained that he hasn't done anything wrong. But, you know, it must be really strange to, to see what we see now in black and white on that video and to, to be someone who had worked for him. Well, there you go. That's how you know that your, your intuition is right, right? I didn't see that proof. Right. Obviously, I saw it with the rest of America today. Mm -hmm. But when I saw it, I knew that that was something that he could be capable of. And mm -hmm. he's, um, he's a genius. He's brilliant. He's one of the best minds I've ever been around. Um, but I think when the power differential is so awful and you just can get away with anything that you want. Exactly. There was nobody around. It was like there was nobody around to really check him. You know, there was nobody around to really check him at all. And that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy right there. But hey, man. We're going to see how this plays out. It seemed like Cat Williams was right. He's like, man, 2024 is going to be the, the year of the truth where everything that was done in the dark is going to come to the light. You know, we've seen a lot of that happening. So, whoo. Man, let me know what y'all think about that. And let me know what y'all think about the whole situation. You know, if y'all appreciate the content, you want to tip the host up above, y'all more than welcome to. It's never mandatory. It's always welcome. I appreciate y'all. Like I always leave you with, God bless y'all. Keep God first. I'm up out of here, family. Peace. Hopefully y'all have a blessed day or night whenever you're seeing this. I'm gone.